This is time for map two between G2 and NIP. Very important matches here to decide who will make it to land, who will make it to the playoffs of the ECS. And it's time for train. So NIP, they picked basically into G2, then lost after losing both pistol rounds, which seems characteristic, and now train. I mean, we were joking off air that maybe for, for this match, uh, Zist started vetoing again instead of threats because it's not only the, the that uh, Dust 2 is not the best map for NIP, in my opinion, it's also that it is actually the best map for G2. So with having a deep uh, map, map pool as uh, NIP has, why don't they pick, let's say, Overpass? It's a map that G2 doesn't play at all, and NIP has played it with mixed uh, success, granted, but still, they should be more prepared on it than G2 is. They went for a gamble, I'd say, for a risky pick, to play G2 on Dust and uh, it didn't pay off for them. They're 1-0 down. Okay, now they're playing Train, which is a map that they can play, no doubt, but it's probably the second best map for G2. I so, think NIP is great. Yes, okay, James. That is also a, a way to put it. Well, yeah. let's, see if they can, let's see if they can win the pistol round, first of all. That's, that would be a good start and Pit's gonna pick up a frag, so maybe there is hope here for NIP not to lose every single pistol round of their lives except for the one that they did actually win today. Anyway, so we have the, interestingly, the, uh, actually, I guess it does make sense. Screen with the smoke and with the, the kit and no Kevlar out of all the players. And to be honest, Scream's only gonna face for about a millisecond shoot you in the f and then shoot you in the face. So in theory, he's probably the best player to be Kevlarless in this uh, setup from that perspective. And again, IP with their man advantage, they're designed to go into the inner bomb site and there's a rotation in there, James, but only one man actually there. Well, Scream spots. Can he pop, though? There's the first one. Get, get the plate popped off. Very patient shot onto Get Right as well. Bomb there, uh, not being planted just yet. Scream has finally been taken down. But uh, the NIP plays are kind of stuck in two directions here. Shocks have a great one tap. So now it's a two versus two. He's got to exist over towards Ivy. Shocks not sure if he should try and help his teammate or go for this kill onto Freiburg. Freiburg dancing around the train, as is Shocks. Meanwhile, there's still a duel going on behind these two as well. Two 1v1s happening, so you can see RPK looking for Exist now. Exist going for the bit of the burst fire, jumping all over the place to try and avoid getting headshot. You won't get headshot, but he will die as well as teammates. The pistol round, guess what, Dan? Doesn't go to NIP. NIP lose pistol round? Oh my god. I didn't expect this, James. The thing is, we were talking uh, previously when we were casting NIP how uh, the T side uh, may not be as strong for them without a good start, right? But in the game against, uh, on Dust 2 previously saw them, yes, they lost both pistol rounds, but they won uh, gun rounds every time and managed to string a couple of rounds together. So here they decide to actually force, yeah. probably because they are expecting G2 to have a bunch of MP9s. And uh, force on a map like this is actually really respectable with the set piece onto A, as we're going to see, really fast, fastly executed here by NIP because the smokes are gonna allow you to get into very close engagements with the Tech Nines, it's ideal. And they're actually gonna turn around here to try to deal with Smith. Smith doesn't get a frag there. Although eventually there is a, a trade for Scream, but still it's a bit awkward. Get Right finally will get another trade going in for his team. Oh, that pop mid air from Get Right, the dink as well to follow. And now Scream is dead. And all of a sudden you got Body versus Forest and Get Right. NIP in with a really nice round now, potentially. Body scanning the bomb site, trying to find what he can. But these players are all over the place right now. And in fact, Get Right, He's like, see you later. I'm off to the B-bomb site. Goes through CT spawn. I think Body may have heard him actually. And he's starting to linger towards that connector and B area. But will he guess correctly? Because also Forrest is over on B now as well. This is, the, is a really hard situation for Body with an MP9. Here he goes, bomb down. Trying to tap with the MP9. Not the best weapon for that, but he's got to make do with what he's got. And he's going to try to push forwards now with an MP9 into the mid and close ranges, hopefully for him, as he encircles his train. Looking for Get Right. Get Right just toying with him, opening up bodies back to his teammate, perhaps. Where's Forrest at? Forrest is not even required. Get Right with a god tier performance in this round with that UMP. Unbelievable. I think that Shox was one of the players who had a, an SMG, but I'm not really sure what that jump was. Obviously a great shot from uh, Get Right to, to get the kill, but that completely uh, ruined the round for 
G2 and uh, and that missed spray from from Smith who had a good flank. But G2 decided to force uh, it right back, and now we'll get to see uh, the NIP's anti force buy on train. And this is something they do. They are just very passive in the beginning of the round, waiting for a push from the CTs, and most of the time they will just group for an uh, outside push using all of the smokes, molotovs to clear the close corners. So Body's holding a one-tap angle and Exit is going to walk straight into it, but Body will be the one to get taken down. I think Exist might have been dinked through the, through the wall there, I'm not sure, but either way, it is a five versus four now. I just wanted to say, like, Get Right is so good at uh, having a read as to when someone pushing him is going to be behind cover and changing his position entirely to where he's expected to be. Very sneaky stuff. We've seen that over multiple maps today alone. So G2 again, they are on the force here, so they're still going to be quite dangerous despite being a man down. We looks like we have a smoke execute coming in, but this can be a problem for NIP when they're trying to get the bomb down. You can see based on where those smokes are, there's not very much space for them to actually plant the bomb. And we might see the CTs pushing through the smoke, but there are still some open areas and shocks is coming in, doing massive damage with the scout here. Getting taken down though, four versus two, so G2. The potential was there, but in reality, it is Scream alone versus four with full armor and a deagle. So at this point, you might consider even holding a passive angle to save what he has. $100 in the bank here, so we're going to see an eco coming up for G2 in the next round. Overall, a pretty, pretty interesting situation developing. NIP able to lose the piss around, but the thing is, <laughs> that's the, the funny thing is that if you lose that piss around, Okay, that sucks. But if you actually win the force, it's, it, you actually end up in this situation where you are better off economically and your opponent's better, uh, worse off economically than if you just straight up won the pistol round. So this ends up being you know, a really good start for NIP, especially considering how many players they kept alive against the force buy. That, now NIP are basically in, in the, the most ideal position. So it's going to be very interesting to see how their train game will fare because uh, NIP, I, I, don't, I haven't seen them play a lot of train. You know, they're a team that, uh, I mean, actually, that said, I think in one of our seasons, they pick train almost every single time. You know, obviously, yep. pre, yeah, yeah. Pre, pre threat. But uh, so they do obviously enjoy train, they're very capable, but it's not one of their go to's. Will they pick nuke every ECS season two? That, yeah, probably. That, oh, probably that, yeah. You think so? I don't, I don't think so. I think they will. I, I, NIP were always, they, they were one of the best teams on nuke for a long time, and I, and I think they really enjoy the new apps. Or quite good at them quite quickly. That nuke is long gone though. Shock's getting off to a good start. He did what he's what he could for his team. This is Nico, not expecting much. Actually, Virtus Pro were one of the teams who also always loved new maps. No matter what the th terrible state they were in, Towers was like, yeah, we love love a cobblestone. Yeah, it's, it was, everyone else is like, oh my god, what is this? You know, when it first came out. But uh, yeah, Virtus Pro. Duck to water with new maps. 54 seconds left on the clock at NIP will creep. I would say like Henry G in a club as opposed to DDK, but he doesn't creep so much as he does stumble and fall down. Or we'll just like roll through the club. Roly roly poly. Rolling through the club. When was the last time you did a roly poly, Dan? Um, I th actually, maybe recently. We have to do those in jiu-jitsu class actually. But more on Jiu Jitsu later. For now, we'll see if NIP can get their Thug Jiu Jitsu going on towards the B bomb site. RPK oh, coming in the dig. Scream! What is happening? <laughs> what has just happened there? Everyone just died. They got in, got in past the smoke. They just pushed one guy in with uh, past the smoke just as they're making contact on the bomb site. And the money sandwich, the money shots. There you go. They're talking about that. That is some. Th well, you, you were asking about Thug Jitsu. There you go. Put some thug jitsu in there. Both teams on the buy now. So this is a very... I don't even know what the right word to say is, but it's a, it's a difficult start for both teams. Yeah, it's, it's pretty back and forwards. Nobody with uh, distinct control. Lots of crazy situations and Forrest is probably going to get wrecked. Yes, he's going to get wrecked indeed. I thought it's going to be by another player's hand, but it was Smith after all. Although Body able to respond here as well onto NIP, so NIP getting shut down. And NIP looked like they were going to build the perfect start after 
after just destroying G2 after the pistol round, but instead, no. I'm not really sure if there was some miscommunication here with 10 AP with what they wanted to do, because what they initially did with the smokes outside and Forrest going out by, by uh, himself, that's the A fake they go for, and Gatwright is the entry player uh, towards the B bomb side, but he was now by, by himself, or there was one other teammate with him, but the bomb was still in holes and there was an, another T player all the way all the way towards uh, Ivy so not really sure what the plan was there and uh, it seems like it's going to be a pretty uh, straightforward round for G2 in the end. There's actually a chance that a bomb could go down here although that chance is dwindling that chance is almost gone the chance is gone. So G2 will take the lead now and they have four AKs on the side four AKs on the CT side. I mean, and yes, this is an eco now, but if they can retain those, that could make a significant, uh, give them a significant, significant advantage going forward into the future rounds there. You say four AKs, but it's four AKs on the likes of, uh, oh, Scream doesn't have one, but uh, Shocks, RPK, and Body. I mean, these, these guys are pretty, pretty insane with these, these, uh, these, these rifles. So this, oh, sorry, Scream decides to keep the M4A1S because he's ridiculous with it and it's very accurate as well. So with his, his start, it actually ends up being very efficient. And Body, he's putting that AK-47 to work here. This mad spray coming out, and he's going to lose it, unfortunately. But it won't amount to too much here. Just uh, an AK in the hands of the kevlar -less players that are in IP. Oh, wow, actually, Freiburg actually gets a spot on somebody. It's, it's rare that you actually see this boost yeah. even amount in, a, in seeing anyone. Usually it's just, uh, it's just to appreciate the scenery. Smith wants to be made part of the scenery, Dan. Well, I mean, G2, NIP are on an eco here, and G2 pushed B, and Scream pushed on the flank, and they've given NIP a three versus three, and they've given him an AK and an M4. Hmm. I don't know why they're being so aggressive when they're eco. What can I do? What's, what's a good idea when the opponents are on an eco? They don't have any armor. They just picked up one gun. Maybe I should try and push behind them and give them another gun. Maybe and I should just play into their advantages and into my disadvantages. Oh, RPK now needs to win this duel and he's not going to do it. So G2 are possibly throwing the round away here. There are 23 yep. seconds left. Shox's position is going to be crucial. Although the bomb's on the other side of the train at the moment. If Pip plants it in the middle, then he may be spotted by Shox. Oh, he's covered. And Forrest comes in from the back now. Smith needs a very fast one versus two. Down to one versus one, but Smith has got 12 HP. He knows where Forrest is. How much does Forrest have to dance with? Oh, he tags him down to two HP. He's got two HP. And the bomb is continuing to tick. This could go either way now. Forrest doing his darndest to hide. I'm not going to be killed by the flashbang, because at this point, who knows? You could even be killed before nades go off. Smith doesn't fake. He can't, he can't be shot from here. He can't be shot, Forrest. What are you doing? Forrest doesn't believe, and Smith is going to go for the hero defuse. <laughs> what a ridiculous round. Oh my goodness gracious me. What is going on? I mean, it kills him in the end. The thing is, though, the thing is, is that what the hell is going on on G2? Why do they go for these crazy pushes in this round? I mean, it, it, the thing is, like, it all looks well and good when maybe, maybe most of the time they actually win those rounds like that. But you are playing massively. That's like a massive disrespect play because you're expecting that that team can't wreck you. No reason to do it in a 4v3. When they were 3v3, RPK had a, an aggressive position. It wasn't as bad. He just lost the duel there, but I completely agree. No reason to, to go for it in a 4v3. Just play it safe. Uh, try to figure out where they're going to go and then uh, just wait for your teammates. You have all the, the nades and they have to go for risky plays because they don't have any armor. I, yeah. think, I think what makes it worse is uh back to it get right is he going to survive just about what makes it worse it's well there's a time and space and IP getting the uh, frags now and what makes it worse James the number the number the, I don't know I was talking about brains today Yako I don't know I need to I need I don't know what I need G2 have two plays left versus the four Bananas. of NIP I can barely I can barely function right now shocks and body what do they do in this situation they need fast frags on get right's trying to help them shooting his teammate is he going to creep through the smoke here? Shox, I don't think, has the angle and to spawn. Now he has been found. So will the NIP players go on the hunt? Shox and Body, Body moving towards upper B to uh, try and give them, give the CTs more real estate to save them. 
and this is the thing, right, is that this round would be fine to lose normally, but they lost five players against the Eco. So now all of a sudden, their money is starting to look really, really grim. Only uh, two players with any cash, Smith and Body. Uh, everyone else is very poor, so this buy is going to look very weird. Probably. I mean, how, what can, okay, what can we do here? We've got 10.7 there on Smith, so you can drop some guns. Smith drops, Body drops, that's it. And then IP, all they need now is to just win that one round. One more round, and they can break G2's money. So we do get the double ops here as well from G2. Smiths and Shocks on those. And uh, NIP going for a play towards Secret. So it's a bit of a default with no presence towards uh, uh, towards Ali, rather. A quick uh, pick coming in from Body there. The trade going back on from Exist and Forest. You know, chiming in there as Pick gets a very forward position in the yard and Forest can support with that AWP. So looking uh, pretty decent here for NIP. That said, Shox peeks out, gets the kill onto Pit, evening the numbers. Scream is seen, Scream is going to be seen no more. RPK moving around the train and Freiburg trying to take him down here, but RPK too many plays for him to deal with. So Shox versus three coming in from the connector position. There are plays heavily tagged, very nice uh, pre-aim there, but Forrest quicker on the trigger finger. Four to four and indeed the money will be somewhat ruined here for G2. At least he got to look him in the eye, James, before he pulled the trigger. He did get to do that. Right then, NIP with an opportunity here. Let's see if their anti echoes are better than G2s. Oh, what I was trying to say before, with the just worst timing ever, is that uh, when Scream went for that flank, he also kind of weakens the position of one of his team there. Like if they get pushed in numbers and they've made the wrong call with the flank, there's no one to trade. You're talking about the round where they lost five players on an anti-eco. Four. No, they lost, they lost everyone. No, Forrest died to Smith after Smith defused the bomb. Righto. <laughs> Just processing that in your mind. At least one of us can process it in their mind. So get right and co moving into the B-bomb site, which only had the one person on it, so the T's, CTs will be on the rotation. Molotov to interconnect, so will be a problem. RPK has Kevlar and a 5.7. Other than that, just pistols on his teammates. So we'll see. Uh, I don't know if there's any point at this right now in G2 trying to get back onto the B-bomb site. So you can see them just holding for exits. Trying to contain NIP, force them to take jewels to uh, make their escape. It's interesting because, you know, NIP can just save inside the bomb site on the other end. But there are two CTs in CT, maybe having a read on that situation. And they can emerge a bit later on. Smith's emerging early though, will get taken down. And now it's RPK, the timing. He literally looks as soon as get right peaks and he will fall. So scream of the eagle to survive, which isn't, isn't that much. Right then, so G2 could buy here. And I think they probably will. But it's gonna suck. See how many grenades they can get out. Smith's going to be orping Kevlar as well. Nice. Always good when you can buy Kevlar. Are we going to see some aggression towards Ivy? Nope. Just two players moving past it. Focusing on main. NIP moving towards B slash pop dog. But he has a tight angle there to try and avoid being flashbangs from lower. But NIP may be moving for a very fast B play here. They've got loads of numbers up high. Two players here for the CTs though. They're coming up with almost no warning. Get right flying, getting taken out in the middle of the sky like a clay pigeon. But the site has been cleared. There is a flank coming in though. Yeah, fire all over the place. So there's pretty much... Hashtag change of pace. A hashtag change of pace. I mean, it shows a, a player like Getright as well, who is known to be a lurker, just jumps from upper. To, to draw attention to himself and uh, with, a, with a simple contact play, Nip uh, gets entrance into B and, and the bomb is down. The round isn't over then. Well, it is over. The problem is, is it? Scream is the one with the diffuse kit, but he's too far away to go for the diffuse. Yeah. Which is why if RBK had the diffuse kit, then they probably both pushed there. Such is life. NIP goes 6-4, to four, and G2, they, they took Forrest's AWP, he was holding near Pop Dog with an AWP and a pistol, with his pistol out. Didn't work out for him, 
and G2 lose the round, but they keep their AWP and pick up another one. And that is going to be a problem for NIP to deal with. I mean, the, the counter to this would be to go for a fast B play, for example. We'll see if they choose to do that. Yeah, this is actually a, a great... Uh, I mean, I, I feel like there's always an element of confidence to a round like this. We've got two orbs, you know, some, some deagles, five sevens, and armor on every player. This, this is very, very winnable. And uh, you never feel too bad if, if you don't make something happen. But uh, we've got screen there. There's the first shot, finds himself a head to pop. And what else have we got here from G2? There's smokes all over the place to make those orbs useless. NIP are aware that they saved them and Freiburg's gonna wrap around, but will he have someone pushing him in the back? Looks like no, but he does get the first base there on connector and he's gonna be able to get that frag and shocks. He'll also be able to get the trade as well as Smith. And all of a sudden, it looks like everyone from NIP are falling like dominoes at this rate. Just exist the last domino to fall. A little bit more stubborn than the rest, and G2 win with four players in that round. That's kind of nuts. And NIP's economy is uh, is looking okay so far, but um, G2 have a real possibility to to begin really applying that pressure. If they win this one, I think they might be able to force an eco if there's no bomb plant. And we're close to the end of this first half as well. Well, they chose to go A. I think, I think the big problem was Scream getting the one dig there because they were looking for a very fast bomb plant and I guess they were unlucky that there was a gap in the smoke and Scream was there and one taps were had. But uh, otherwise, who knows how it goes. They get a bomb plant down, maybe they try and push and take deeper control of the site. Could, could be done towards B as well. But anyway, they made a decision and it didn't work out on this occasion. So the pressure will continue here for NIP with their buy. Two plays moving up IV, get right straight into the reticle of RPK. And down both will go. Screen boosted up on the box. I don't think Forrest has seen his gun. If he looked over there towards Connector, surely you would have seen him on a second occasion. Scream might take Forrest down now. Here's some chinks around the site as Forrest goes for the shot. Sorry, Scream, but I don't think Forrest has any idea where he is. This is an interesting situation. Two players coming from Connector, always an awkward spot. The HE will find its way in there. Actually, will connect with nothing this time around because now the CT start to push that angle. And simultaneously, we get the push in from the back line as well. Forrest looking to find those kills. Cheese, four players at once, gets the first frag, has the info codes for the repeat. Where's the trade at? Looks like the other two players will be alive, clearing out the alley side there, up the side. Forrest still just taking everyone down. Finally, though, the kill comes in, and Scream has time, I think, just barely, to get the defuse in. And there it is. Down to the last man, down to the last points of health, the last fibers of life. Scream will stand, and that's G2 with that sixth round. Who needs more rounds in this half? the team that uh, will win the game. And that's why we play Yanko. <laughs> no, I, I mean, uh, probably G2, right? You would expect uh, NFP's T side to be stronger than, than G2's, that they maybe, not, maybe are not going to be able to replicate the same performance. But it depends, obviously. I don't think they're as uh, structured, or not as structured, but not as uh, complex in their T side. I think they will re rely more on uh, some uh, looser, fast strats, depending a lot more on entry kills, so we'll have to see. Well, no smoke on the end of the balcony there. Maybe NIP trying to be a bit unpredictable, trying to take G2 by surprise, but there is no surprise for G2. They don't lose a single player. Normally when people emerge up a B, they put a smoke in front of that position to, ex to stop the, the uh, AWPers seeing them so easily. And I think that's the second time NIP have just run out raw and it has not worked out for them. And they will be suffering from a decimated economy now. We have a smoke execute coming in, it seems. Could be done on either side. Moving towards Ivy, though, in numbers. There you go, we get the play in. And we'll have to see whether or not it's going to work out. There it is, the first push. RPK is going to discard them like last week's dinner. And that's going to be the round. Just a little dink there for some fun from Forrest, but only one frag in the end, it won't matter too much anyway. And Scream's just gonna shoot shocks. After the round, of course. For some reason. Um, it's okay because of course they can just buy any, regardless, doesn't matter too much, but. Uh, I, I shot shocks at the plate call thing. 
I shot him in the head of a pistol, deliberately. I didn't kill him though. I why, why, would, why would you do that? I just felt like it. Between all your knife, your, you know, your team damage, team killing, knife, knife shenanigans. Playing with you is, is stressful, James. Okay. Dan says playing with other people is stressful. We've got the, uh, the two orbs here on G2 still in play. And all the smokes there on the outer side just perhaps to force a response from G2, but there is none. And they've got a bit of a slower play. Forrest trying to shoulder the angle there to get himself towards a more forward position in the outer yard to create opportunities. But it's actually Get Right picking up an opportunity there. It does get traded pretty quickly though. And here is Forrest sneaking around. And still, he's able to get even deeper into the sights. A truly a ninja. And it's going to be Pit to steal away the frag. Forrest at this point is just an observer. To all these kills, he'll finally die. As uh, Scream and Shocks go hand in hand with the frags to try to save this round. And it looks pretty good here for the French side. Just one more player exists, trying to work his way up the ladder here. But he gets dropped straight Out. off the train. 9-2, G2 taking the, taking the first half. 9-6. Pretty, pretty well played by them. Overall, anything that stood out to you, Yanko, though? I think that it was, uh, they were just reacting to what NAP was doing, right? They didn't uh, need to go for some plays on their own because NAP was trying to finish the round pretty qu quickly most of the time, right? So it was up to G2 just to react to it and they managed to do a good job, especially in the later part of the half. Of course, they did lose the second round after winning Pistol. Surely sucks. Well, that's been a, the story of this entire match, I would say. Or the day in general. Yeah, indeed. Win the pistol, lose everything else. Almost. So, G2 with uh, a good first two maps in terms of picks. They are in a, with a great opportunity to take this 2-0. NIP definitely on the back foot after a surprise dust 2 pick by them. Gotta turn the tables now and win the pick of G2. Let's see if the tables will be flipped. Or will, the, or will the tables be staying firmly in place, James, in their upright positions? We've got the push in to be really fast from G2. And there is the tapping from Freiburg, connecting with a few players here, but no heads, which is the key connections required. Get right shows him how it's done. Picking up the kill onto Smith, but shocks and body with frags of their own. Get right still alive though, trying to win this pistol around here for an IP. Get right again with the third frag. And all of a sudden, it's under shocks and scream, the tap masters of G2 with those pistols. Shocks has picked up a USP and he is very dangerous now as he looks to try to kill Get right. But Get right is actually getting a few tags in there. Disincentivizing shocks for going for the peak. Get right finds his fourth kill, just systematically exterminating the G2 presence. And he's going to go for the hold now. Manly play from Get right. He's got the support and exists. He's going to hold it down. What a play from Get right. This just, just looks so calm. So, yep, just going to kill you and you and you and you. It was really nice the way he bounced off the ladder as well for the third kill, which is uh, an issue we saw yesterday in a separate match where Yanko mentioned. A bit of ladder play that may have helped, I want to say, mouse sports. Was it mouse sports? It didn't help them because they didn't go for it. Exactly. Would it help them? Yes. It was yes. yesterday against Dignitas. Indeed it was. So, NIP with a crucial pistol round. Get right, just like, right guys, I'm going to come in and sort this. Oh, that is... Oh, that's just poetry in motion right there. I thoroughly enjoyed that. In fact, Bell will be run. That's the James enjoyment belt. Is it, is it really? I think it is. Oh dear, that was uh, pretty brutal. Pretty brutal, and now it's just shocks. It's just shocks. Will there be more bells rung? The bell has many purposes. Today it is the James enjoyment bell. North American broadcast, it is the what on earth is going on bell. And it has only been ranked once today, James, meaning you're not very pleased. This is not a good day for me today. <laughs> I think we could all realize that. I'm doing what I can. I know how that feels. <laughs> well, they're going to observe shocks and see if he can do those. Uh, it looks like rabbit ears on his stickers, his G2 stickers. 
Or maybe it doesn't. Maybe I just want it to. Either way, he's dead, and we're going to move into the next round. Maybe you just don't like samurais for some reason. I have three samurai swords. <laughs> All right. That's pretty cool, though, actually. Yeah? Are they still sharp? They are. Do you play with them sometimes? I once cut my foot with one a long time ago. Nice. But they just, uh, they're on display now. They... <laughs> oh, the, the, I don't the cutting incidents. <laughs> oh, these were for display. <laughs> they are not to be touched ever again. <laughs> they spill blood at least. That is a good sign. Anyway, it's uh, going to be time for Forrest and his MP9 to be put to use. G2 about to go in. And when they go in, they go in. As, they go in as, as a wise man there. once said. <laughs> yeah. In a country far, far away. <laughs> a slow start to the second half. An IP still with the uh, SMGs onto Pit and Forest. This is an interesting flash for Pop Dog, but it just hasn't worked out. That said, the frags will. Pit now coming in to do what he can, but there are too many G2 players. The bomb's down though, rotation coming in, but it's only Get Right and Freiburg. Left, Get Right, putting in work though, down to two versus one now. And Freiburg will be put out of his misery by none other than Scream. 8 to 10 here for G2. Very good start, but NIP can go for their proper buy now since they didn't buy up with those uh, SMGs. That said, Freiburg is going to be a little bit broke. Well, he's going to have to make you, James. He is indeed. He's going to have to do the best he can. It's Kevlar from us and a smoke the most depressing buy you can have, but G2 going for an outer push then. Uh, yeah, 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 it's happening. So sudden, Yanko. And all of, all of a sudden we get two kills out of G2. Make that three frags as they push really rapidly into the outer, uh, outer bomb side, into the A side itself with the plants. I'll be on three HP and there was a flank into the, the uh, B holes there, but uh, NIP's get right. What can he do with this flank? And all of his teammates died so quickly. It's not really a flank if the T's are in the bomb site with the bomb down and all of his teammates are dead. At that point, you're just trying to get it back into the site again. So, NIP are gonna have to try and save these two guns. You can see that their economy is completely smashed to pieces. So G2, if they don't do anything ridiculous, as we saw in their first half in a similar round against an Eco, and if they keep five players alive, they've got a really good good sort of starting point now to, to create a huge advantage for themselves. And we'll have to see how NAP adapts uh, going further into this path, because what's characteristic for G2 on train is that they don't really go towards the inner bomb site. They seem to, to favor the outer uh, bomb site, even if they start losing rounds, they're, they're still gonna try and, and go for it, which is pretty, uh, it's pretty defining for them. It, not a lot of teams do that. A lot of teams switch a lot, maybe even go for the inner bomb site more because it's probably easier to take. So NIP should know this if they were preparing for G2 and they should have a, a plan in place to counter it. Yeah, we'll see if there's maybe like a four-man setup that they tend to use or something like that. That would be, from what, you, from what you're saying, that would be quite logical, but we shall see how the logic is applied in the future rounds. This one is probably just a case of NIP maybe even trying to put get right in existing positions where they can keep their, their rifles into the next round, perhaps even, to try to make sure that their economy is going to be good in the future. But actually, they'll commit both NIP's get right and exist into four positions on the a bomb site because they wanted to win this round. That's kind of how the, what it suggests to me. If you put, if you know that they're going to be attacking A so often, and and you put get right and exist really forward in the A bomb site, it's a good setup um, to, to deal with aggression. But you are committing, so they will die. RPK is going to let two of his teammates die before he comes in for the cleanup, but he will clean up everyone else, so it's all fine. Another round taken by G2, taken by force, taken without choice. NIP will have another buy, but uh, time is running out for them, or at least the rounds are, because G2 continue to accrue. So what, let's see. What do they accrue, James? Rounds. Time for NIP to start winning some gun rounds, boys. Time, it is. time to get things rolling here. Let's see how they plan to do it. Four people on the outer bomb site initially to defend the rush, which is not there. 
and does that mean it's wrong, Yanko? No, it's how you're supposed to open up train most of the times, but your B player has to be aware of it and has to adjust accordingly, seeing it as he's the sole player on the bob side. And now we can see that NIP doesn't have a lot of utility left, so maybe they're sticking with those four players towards the outer bomb side, exactly what uh, I was talking about, knowing that G2 uh, prefers going for that outer take. So this is probably a conscious this decision from NIP. You can see that even Getright is playing super close to the outer bomb site in uh, Link. And that allows them to actually push the player to, uh, to E-Box, where he otherwise wouldn't be pushing. And you can see that NIP get ahead of the push, cutting it down before he can get out of the choke points with the grenades, which is a key factor. And Body, again, it's not much of a flank if your teammates are all dead. So there's the GG, or well, rather, not really a GG, but in that round, there's the, the end We're of that round. We're still far away from the GG, <laughs> yeah. I say that sometimes when something's over. It's like, there's the GG and it's over, but obviously... Yeah, uh, G2, if they are going to be delayed as much, they need to use flashes to clear those close corners, basically because it's the most powerful position that the CTs can have to defend a late outer take. So G2, again, prepping for that outer bomb site, it seems. Maybe they're claustrophobic. Claustrophobic? Yeah, they go into closed spaces. They like the sky. It does make a lot of sense for, for their team as well with all the tapping monsters that they have. Uh, those AKs perform really well with the smokes down and in the chaos. So I can see what, you know, I can see it fit their style. It fits their style. Um, but uh, if, you become too if you become too predictable though, that's, it always has its, its drawbacks. You can see they have control of halls now, of B halls. So maybe that's a sign of things to come. Maybe they're going to fake the inner bomb side. They're grouping towards there uh, slowly. They only have three smokes, so their options are pretty limited. They kind of have to go inner at this point. And they're going in with no smokes, just raw peaks here. Again, same as the previous round. This time they will pay off for them eventually. The B bomb site has been lost. NIP coming in for the rotation. No smokes required to enter the site. Default plant coming in, and uh, they, I mean, they've got RPK taking a semi-advanced position, and that is a smoke in the middle of B, so they could have gone for the more open plant. Again, Astralis are the only team that I can recall doing a side plant. Yanko, you look frustrated. Uh, no, I'm not frustrated. I was just going to say that this can work to your advantage, right, when you are known for doing one thing over and over again. Let's say Navi for having that slow pace, and then at the major when they were playing Astralis, they just, in the first and the second gun round, I think, were really going for fast-paced uh, strategies, which completely caught Astralis off guard. They were saving their nades, they weren't expecting that. So it's similar for G2. You can see that both Freiburg and Gatorade were really far back from the bomb site. To one of the reasons can be that they were maybe they maybe misjudged uh, G2's money situation. Maybe they expected them to only be on, on pistols, and that way they didn't want to get into a close quarter uh, duels with them or they maybe just expected another outer take so they wanted to be uh, fast on the rotate. Neither of the things happened. Uh, G2 went for a pretty simple contact play with Smiths holding uh, uh, lower and link and that got them the entry kills and they secured the round after that. I say secured way too much. Do you feel secured? Yeah, so, there's nothing wrong with security though. I do feel secured. Good. That's good. Well, we've got three players around IV here for NIP, obviously not concentrating on the IV itself. There is a lurker in shocks, but he's deciding to rotate. The rest of his uh, side are in the rooms, in the halls, and it seems they'll be going over towards the B bomb site again. But uh, what kind of play will it be? They're approaching one minute on the clock. Get right is alone, holding an incendiary, looking to set people on fire. Um, bit of a pop flash coming in for him, but he's going to get fully wrecked here by Scream. Freiburg's close though, takes down body, but how many more can he get? So many assailants showing at the same time, proving a little bit difficult for him. So Smiths is, uh, I don't know what he's doing there, but he's going to get a kill through. I mean, he, I didn't even understand what just happened there, but it worked. That was kind of amusing. So three MIP players left, one pretty far away in the main, but that's an important early frag here for Pitt. Yeah, nice snap. And now it's down to Scream, Smiths and, and Shocks to kill the remaining three of NIP. 
The Swedes creep ever closer. Exist up on the top. Getting a good vantage point there, and Scream's just gonna die. He is just gonna straight up get wrecked. There's no Molotov to be thrown here from the top position, so that means the Shocks needed his teammates alive there. There's still three left. Ooh, can't get the shot onto Exist. I don't know, it, I really don't know that it would have, in fact, it wouldn't have bought enough time anyway, but still, it's going to be the round there for MIP, and that seemed like a really weird afterplant for PC. Exactly, they were in a 4v3 yeah. uh, before RPK died, and I think the Smiths maybe thought he has a smoke. Instead of a Molotov left, because why would he ever throw the Molotov that close? That just denies him uh, the ability to help his teammates. But again, a really uh, a tough, uh, tough loss for G2 in that round. They really had the advantage going for them, and uh, now they, they need to bounce back. Yeah, that was a very important round for NIP to win. Three orps on the map at the moment, two of which will be on Get Right and Pit. Get Right, the occasional orp. We've seen some great, great stuff from him with the orp so far this week. Smiths, is he going to strafe? Because yes. if he strafes, he may die. Here we go. Here we go, James. Here we go. Where are we going then? We're going all over the place, James. Awesome. We're going everywhere, all around the world. But first, You'll see Forrest move closer to Team N. He wants a bit of a look in, and he's going to find himself nice. Scream. Scream was not happy to see him. Oh dear. Looks like Smith will peak indeed. The crab walk this time around is going to get drops. And now it's time for the remainder of G2 to try to go for a risky play. Get some taps in here. That was, I think, maybe a headshot through the wall, but no frag for RPK. His teammates are dropping. Well, he is dropping. Teammates will probably soon be dropping as well, as it's going to be very hard to push in here with such low HP. Shox gets another frag there. Ridiculous from Shox. Looking at the, the next one, how on earth will Shox get a third kill? And all of a sudden, Body comes in. What a ridiculous scenario that looked completely won by NIP. That looked like NIP completely had that. That was a two versus four. And Shox is allowed to run out of bullets. And Body, had, and Body had six HP. Just. Uh, misplay from, from NIP's uh, individual players basically, while uh, Pith I think was uh, in hell, he was hiding, and but players were peeking out of Link and Shocks, he only had duels, he, they were in a 4v2 and he got I think 3 duels off and Pith in the end gets killed in the back by, by Body from Ivy and that's a tough, tough loss for NIP, they're uh, on a really sketchy buy now, 3 pistols off of Pith without armor and Freiburg on a, on a UMP. Difficult times ahead for the Swedes. What a, I didn't, I mean, what a crazy round. I mean, look at, what it, look what it did to them. It's decimated that. Look at what it has done, James. It's decimated, it's annihilated. Exist can't even reach the AWP without it costing a lot of his HP because of the Molotov, another one as well. They are not letting <laughs> them get anywhere close that. to that AWP. It's gonna be molten soon. Oh dear, everyone's dying. NIP have no money. They lost the only chance back into this round almost immediately. Get Ready's gonna just throw a very nice pop flash in there to pick himself up a weapon. And Exist picks up a kill. Maybe another one. No. It's down to Get Right now and he's gonna die. So it looks very much like G2 are gonna take this one now because NIP have nothing to buy with. Their money is terrible. This is the worst possible situation for the Swedes. I think the worst possible situation would be if they all got back banned. Just, just, just to be, just to be annoying there. So second worst possible situation <laughs> for the for NIP at the moment. They've got nades, they've got pistols, they don't have much else. G2 are going for the raw push again. RPK showing to connect it despite the fact that the CTs get there first. This is a complete disaster. What is how? This why? Four versus one now. Shocks alone. They don't have the bomb. There's not much they do have. I mean, it's just, it's just careless from G2. RPK is charging through connector, everyone knows, including him, that the CTs get to connector faster than the Ts get to T main. So you can't just run there with a smoke in your hand, because you're going to get wrecked. Well, they've given away four weapons, one of which is an AWP, three AKs. 
to a force. If there was a way to allow NIV back into this, obviously, obviously it's losing this round because they're <laughs> because they're already on fifteen. <laughs> but but the fact that they you know that potentially four of them will survive with three AKs and an AWP. That's and, and their economy was so awful. That's ridiculous. But shocks. He's not done just yet. He's going to pick up a quick headshot there and see if he can't just kill everyone on the NIP team. But it's uh, not going to happen now, in the of end. Course. He is indeed dead, and NIP have something to play for, play with now. And G2, you can't really say the same for them. They don't have any money now, so this gets really weird and awkward. How do you feel, Yanko? I feel that mistakes were made then playing against pistols, and now Again. they need to win a gun round to win the game, which they showed that they're perfectly capable of, but there's not uh, uh, many rounds left to play with, so they're gonna have to do it soon. Well, well, well. G2 with four rounds to play with, and the bomb is gonna be lost. It's a, a present from, a, from, from the sky, from above. A gift from the gods. At least it wasn't bird poop, Dan. Those are the usual presents from above. Or hellstone. Shocks with an opportunity. A window. Pitts out of position here. But Freiburg is going to be covering him. Two kills for him. So it's Scream versus Four without the bomb. It's just about how much damage can he do on this occasion. Got to keep himself at the one versus one. Down goes Forrest, but that will be his lot. So NIP continuing to build the bank as they continue to close the gap. Now we will probably see a buy coming in, but Scream's only got $2,700 in the bank, so perhaps he went a little bit too far in the previous round. What do you want to see in this round, Yanko, for G2? What do you want to see from them? It is difficult for them now, as you can see, they don't have an op, uh, the Scream only with the Tech 9, and they have enough utility, RPK only with one smoke, but what I would like to see from them is probably a B fake at this point. Try and secure a ladder, and after that, uh, wait for the CTs to spend some more utility and then go for a B fake, but they seem to be going for a, another A take with the smokes. Another A take with the smokes. And it's Pit to open it up here. Out of the gate with a frag for NIP. The spray from Get Right will find another kill. And all of a sudden, G2 are falling man after man. It's down to Smiths and Shocks against four. Pit's close towards Ivy at the moment, although that Molotov might go a little bit too far. So still work to be done here, but now it's Smiths alone and they know where he is. Three versus one minute on the clock. Tries to get the one versus one in Forest, but he can't find the tap. It's interesting, they put a wall of smoke down and it got killed through the part they didn't smoke. Exactly, they're not really needed to, to peek there anyway. But yeah, these smoke rounds can always get a bit random, right? If uh, the CTs get good timings, if they want to flash through the smoke or the T's uh, as well. We, can, we saw that Gatray got a kill through the smoke and then uh, smartly waited for the player to push once uh, he was out of bullets, but if he doesn't get the kill and, and dies instead from that push through the smoke, things might have gone the other way. But at this point, NAP should probably have a good idea of how uh, G2's outer take looks, and uh, they seem to have a, a good uh, setup to counter it. It does feel, uh, in a logic, to, to a large extent, that uh, you know, train is G2's map, but they really have trouble finding a way to, to close the map. And there's a lot of teams that have this issue, whereas they struggle to close from the advantage that they may may have. I don't, I don't really think so. When it comes to G2, at least recently, right? They've had uh, issues like in the Luminosity game, uh, at Pro League, they had to come back from an 11-4 uh, first half deficit. Then uh, in the Fnatic game as well, they were on the T side and, and it was uh, close towards the end and they just managed in, managed in the end to win three or four consecutive rounds that they needed with exactly these outer takes. So I think they've shown that they have the, the composure and the mental strength to close out games. Right, right. It's just that teams will pay more attention to them right now and maybe have a plan in set for, for their play style uh, specifically. That's a, that's a good answer. I've got the auto sniper on Get right now. He's, he's pulled out the dirty gun, James. It's dirty. It's filthy. It's disgusting. It is indeed. It's the auto sniper. 
Got two NIP players playing at the back of... Oh, and I think he's got a rifle next to him as well, so he can switch up if he needs to get close for a retake, which is pretty damn smart. First world problems, of course. Indeed it is. So, NIP in a round that they must win. G2 in a round they cannot afford to lose. And uh, this is... Wow! Well, no frag for Get Right whatsoever. I thought he was, they were going to be straight into the meat grinder there, but it was him turned into the mince. Five versus three, and G2 with a great opportunity to just move to the CT side of the B bomb site. Five versus two now, and I think this might be the GG, Dan. Those two entry frags were just so insane. Just immediate entry frags. You can't ask for a better way into a bomb site, and Pitt has to try to clutch this against five players. Not going to happen. So G2 are going to be able to defeat. MIP first on Dust 2 and then on Train. And we had a close series on our hands, you know, MIP, despite picking into, into G2 on, with that Dust 2 pick, you know, losing those pistol rounds. They still provided the close game and they did a good effort trying to come back in, on Train, but it seemed like G2 series. I'm not sure if Gatright actually hit Scream twice, but both times in, in, the, in the legs. In the legs. So Scream survived with 11 HP, but it was enough for his team to already push towards lower and, and uh, to, to kill Getright, which was really important since he was holding a really passive position to try and get a kill or two before they can go for the retakes. He dies and uh, G2 manages to, to gain ground right there. But yeah, another uh, close game, I mean, for, for NIP, but uh, they just can't uh, seem to, to figure out G2 uh, enough. It's, it's it's so hard. It must be well. It must be really hard to play against a scream a scream and a shocks when they're they're on form and they're hitting entry shots like that because you're just put in a situation where it's, it, what can you do? You just, I mean, you can't win around like that almost because they take the bomb site so fast. You can't get back into the choke points, which is that's always a dynamic on the B bomb side as well. You see a lot of teams that kind of underestimate the power of being able to quickly push into into taking control as T's of connector and CT spawn. Exactly. I think that in both maps, actually, you can't really say that there were mistakes from either of the teams or some bad calls. Uh, yes, NAP did lose that round against uh, Pistols uh, in the first half that might uh, have proven to be detrimental for them. But then again, G2 as well lost a similar round. So I think it was pretty uh, even on that point and in the end when it came down to the executes and, and uh, to the gun rounds G2 was just uh, better today they, they were just better and I think that NIP will have something to regret here regarding their map Vito simply I just feel that if they would have picked probably overpass as the first map I think that would have been a, a, a clear win for them and then okay train you lose uh, in, in this fashion pretty close then for the third map, I would want Dust2 to be the third map even. You know, maybe, maybe G2 would have picked it instead of Train if it was open. But maybe uh, try and uh, get to something like uh, Cobble for, uh, for a third map. That's, that's going to be interesting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask threats about uh, the map selection there. Because it is a bit of an interesting one. Um, but yeah, James, any highlights from that, that uh, matchup? The veto pick. <laughs> the map picks was the, were the highlight for me. Just really interesting that they, they picked Dust 2 against G2. For me, it's, it's cool to see that, that continued form as well from, from Shocks and Scream, because that's the question for me. Can it just, can it, is it going to be just sticking? Yeah, and for me, it wasn't Scream that much here. Yes, he had good rounds, but he wasn't, you know, exploding like uh, he was maybe at, at Pro League. Yes, Shocks was really good on both maps, but in the first map it was body really contributing a lot. Uh, here it was more of a, a team effort all around. All right, well, are we ready with the rankings now? Because this is, of course, time to take the lay of the land and see where all the teams lie for the playoffs. Of course, we've completed all the matches now, and uh, it's the playoffs that uh, will decide who goes to the finals, and of course, we need to see who is going to be making it to LAN. So, it's, uh, here it is. What are the initial thoughts? Well, it says seven played for Nip and G2, but ignore that, it's definitely eight. You can see five and three yeah. for both of them. So uh, we've got three players, three teams on 15 points. And I still think that this is not correct. I mean, I, I, I'm not really sure, but if you're looking head to head first, then G2 should be um, second. I mean, Nip 
cannot be because they just lost to G2. So I mean, totally. And it they is lost correct. to Face, so NAP cannot be. If it's round difference, then maybe. Round difference. Well, it says round difference, so. But okay, I'm not gonna. I just like you guys take take over the, the <laughs> rankings. I do not. I am not uh, believing this so far. <laughs> <laughs> because NAP and G2 have the same number of rounds. Oh, well, we'll, let, we'll let people in smarter than us figure it out. Right, so well, there, there it is. You see at the, at the top of the table, we've got Astralis and NIP. So that's the land spots. And then three to six is going to be the playoffs as well. And interestingly, of course, you know, Fnatic just scraping through seemingly. And you know, it, it, with the playoffs, you know, we're going to see that G2 Fnatic matchup. It's going to be very interesting as well because FaZe did a lot better than I expected. Actually, I think that's one of the, the surprises for me is to see that FaZe are managing to get so high up, uh, generally speaking. I thought that they would be one of the teams that, you know, with all the lineup turmoil that they had, that they would be t more towards the bottom. And conversely, you know, for me, another shocker is actually, I felt like Dignitas were, had a lot of good games and they had a lot of potential, but they just, they just kept losing those games. I felt like, I feel like uh, they had a really hard time and it could have been very, very different for Dignitas, but here we are, they're on the bottom of the table. Indeed, you, I've had it confirmed in IP do come second. For whatever reason. Okay. There we go. So Boom. NIP. Congratulations to the Swedes. Ignore everything I said regarding rankings in I, the I past five hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. So we got G2, FaZe, Mouseports and Fnatic coming up in the playoffs in the remaining days of play that we have. Of course, you'll be able to see uh, me, James and Gianco uh, covering all the European stuff. And we have... Still, to decide you know, who's going to make it through for the playoffs and who will get those land spots, obviously, well, Luminosity, we know they are confirmed, having just wrecked everyone in uh, North America. As it was and losing one map. Losing one map. So, so the TSM on cobblestone, <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course, yeah, na naturally. Um, so, and that was also before the kind of more reformed style of TSM when they're starting to like play more. It doesn't matter what style. And... They lost to the TSM on cobblestone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Well, either way. So it's uh, that's coming up later. That all the concluding matches for that, and uh, you will be joined by Jackie and Florin as per usual to guide you through all those matches that are remaining. And it's going to be very interesting to see because, of course. All these teams from North America who are going to be getting those playoff spots for LAN as well as the two qualify for LAN will be combined, meshed together, and we'll have all of our teams then ready for Wembley at the SSE Arena in a month's time. And you can still buy tickets, of course, if you go to wembley.csgoleague.com. And csgoleague.com is our portal for the ECS. So if you're ever looking for any information or statistics or uh, any of the past VODs, any matches you may have missed, you can find all that information there. And also, if you're just looking for the scores, if you are moving around, James. If you're a, if you're a man or woman about town. About the town. Get part of the Geldem or the Mandem. Yep. You may choose to download the Score Esports app onto your phone to check out all that stuff on the move. And you can find it at your respective App Store, whether it be iOS or Google Play. But I think that pretty much sums it up from us here on the desk. So that is a goodbye from me, James, and Yanko. We'll be seeing you tomorrow for more European ECS for the playoffs. And we'll leave you with the Crossfire Rapid, or rather the, the Corsair Rapid Fire. Pl rapid fire pl Come on, mate. J James, help me out. I hope you got James. You can do it. Corsair Rapid Fire Player Boom. of the Week. Goodbye. There we go.